Hey YouTube, so today I'm going to do a quick little video about a macro lens that's available on AliExpress. Bought this with my own money for the GoPro Hero 9. Um, I started doing time lapses and other videos on the workbench with the GoPro only to realize that um, the focal distance is infinity on these cameras and the picture quality and the focus is kind of terrible. Um, so I ordered this lens and I like it. It has some limitations and considerations. However, I wanted to quantify it so that people who are considering this as an option for themselves could decide for themselves whether it would work or not. So to get started, I've got my normal camera up on the camera arm and I've got the GoPro uh, tethered as a USB camera um, as a using the GoPro webcam app and I've got a cheap Amazon you know uh, focus chart or ramp and I'm going to use this to just gauge its level of focus the depth of focus and any sort of pin cushioning effects or distortions that may uh, reduce the effectiveness of this macro lens for you, the user. One of the interesting things about the GoPro is it uses um, in-sensor cropping or in-software cropping to change the effective focal length of the lens. You can set a wide, a narrow, and a linear lens and that changes how the field of view acts on this camera which would also change the level of distortion or pin cushioning that typically comes with macro or wide angle lens uh, attachments. So to get started I'm going to put up the GoPro on the main image and we're going to take a look at how well it focuses. Um, it is admittedly a little bit choppy because the uh, GoPro is only running over USB 2, it's just a webcam, it's not terribly great and I don't think I can record while using it as a webcam so I'm gonna have to maybe do some separate footage tests with the GoPro in 4k mode to really capture how it behaves in terms of resolution so for this test I'm setting the focus ramp such that it fills the camera frame from the bottom up I have the camera lens in narrow mode Here's the camera lens in wide mode. So you can see the visible pin cushioning of the uh, grid here at the bottom. And finally, this is the linear mode. And the linear mode, you can actually see almost inverse pin cushioning where the lines are bent um, effectively this way instead of this way. Now, this is with the stock attachment on the GoPro. This is a stock waterproof cover. Alright, we're going to start with this in linear mode and switch out the attachment. Uh, of course this is live on camera so I can't easily swap this. I'm going to try and hold this still while changing it um, just to avoid any changes to the setup so that you can decide for yourselves whether this is a lens mod that you want. And I'm kind of failing keeping it still. Yep, I shifted it. Damn it. Yeah, it takes a little bit of force to uh, get that locked into place. Either way, here we go. Uh, this is the macro lens attachment on wide. No, linear. We're going to switch it over to narrow. And finally, we're going to switch it back to wide. So on the wide mode, we'll start here. You can still see that there's pin cushioning at the bottom. However, in terms of its um, depth of focus, by default, when we started, this was approximately 21 centimeters from the plane here, and everything ahead of that was out of focus. With the macro lens, everything's in focus almost right up to the camera. You can see quite a bit of detail and it stays in focus from 20 centimeters and closer. One thing to note however is the distortion to the sides. You'll notice 
I'm just sliding it sideways here. I'm actually going to keep it, well, let's do this, just to make it as scientific as possible. I'm going to use this ruler to help keep things steady. And what we're going to do is just slide this from side to side. You can see centered in front of the sensor, center of the picture is in focus, and then as we slide to the side, it starts to fall off quite dramatically. You can see that this side is still in focus, and the perimeter of the picture, the edge of the picture is out of focus. Now, this is with the um, the widest setting on the lens, so let's try this with narrow and linear. Switching it to narrow mode now, you can see that you get an even tighter crop. However, the focus is reasonably usable at the edge of the picture. And to the other extreme, same thing. It's it's reasonably usable. You would never be able to get this kind of focus with the um, non-lens attachment. Uh, let's switch it over to linear. And we've switched it over to linear now. Um, you'll see the linear mode has very noticeable inverse pin cushioning where it uh, kind of distorts outwards. The focus does not seem to hold very well. It actually seems to be worse in linear mode than it is in wide mode. Uh, because in wide mode I could get it a little bit further out before the focus fell off. Whereas the focus falls off about here. I'm, I'm watching the, um, the checkerboard pattern just to the left of this ruler. And the usable picture really only seems to be um, in the center of the frame and no further out. So this is a quantitative test using at least some kind of a standard, but I do want to do some empirical tests. Um, just for final reference, the distance is about 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters from the lens to the um, to the test card. Before moving on to empirical testing, I wanted to show some 4K footage recorded natively in the camera. I'm going to do voiceovers just to make this simple and fast. So here we go. First, with SuperView at 4K, you see haze throughout the picture, and if you punch into a 1080 crop and start to look at the edges of the picture, you can see a haze, but it's still quite usable. In 4K SuperView mode, with the card right in front of the camera, you can see the image is very usable. At a 1080 crop, you start to see some chromatic aberration in the corners of the picture, but otherwise it's still usable. In wide mode, interestingly, there's a difference between webcam performance and 4K native from a distance of 20 centimeters. In webcam mode, you seem to get some sort of subsampling which improves the apparent focus in 4K mode is very distorted. However, 4K comes into its own world at a distance of 0 to 10 centimeters. Punching into a 1080 crop, you'll notice that there's much less chromatic aberration in the corners or distortion, even for the finer checkerboard scale in the right-hand side. Continuing with the 4K theme, in linear mode, we have a much cleaner picture edge-to-edge, -edge there's much less chromatic aberration or distortion from the front of the image to the back of the image, that is from 0 centimeters out to about 25 centimeters. It's a very good clean image and surprisingly little distortion in the corners as well. Punching into a 1080 crop, you'll notice that the corners again have good detail and not too much distortion in the edges, and even in the back of the picture it looks nice and clean. Finally, to wrap up the 4K segment, we have the narrow lens mode. You'll notice that it's a very tight crop. The card is at zero centimeters from the base of the camera, and you have a pretty deep depth of field from about zero to 14 centimeters from the lens of the camera itself. It's a nice picture with not too much distortion. However, you get some more fall off if you get within a millimeter or two of the lens, like uh, shown in the video here. Punching into a 1080 crop in narrow mode, you see lots of nice details, very little chromatic aberration, no distortion in terms of linearity. However, you do see some pretty intense fall off 
at very close distances. Okay, so we're back on the test bench and I've got a surrogate interesting thing to put in front of the camera. This is a uh, laser ring gyro. Um, it's probably one of the very few ones out there in, <laughs> I guess, normal civilian people's hands. I don't know how they demilitarize these. Um, or just if they're even military or if it's just um, old aerospace stuff, but I, I haven't seen any videos on YouTube about this and I do want to do a video about this one day. Regardless, it's a really interesting thing with some challenging uh, views. So, okay, so forgive the shaky cam mode. I'm holding it as steady as I can with both hands. I've attached the selfie stick tripod and here we are in linear mode linear mode you can see the reverse pin cushioning at the edge of the picture but as we get closer with the macro you can see that it actually falls out of focus as you get within maybe I want to say two two to six centimeters like that's about two centimeters and those solder joints right in the middle of the picture are out of focus to get those in focus we've got to pull back to about I want to say 8 to 10 centimeters and we can kind of scan our way around the fine details you can see all of the capped on PCB trace in the back the uh, thin hand soldered wires the prisms and the other bits and pieces I'm doing this all live but uh, let's see how this works out so that was linear now let's look at narrow give it a moment to uh, there we go narrow you can see that uh, it's got a much tighter crop and as you get closer again the focus falls off as you get too close but it does empirically feel like I can get closer to the object or it's an apparent longer focal length I should say because it's using a tighter crop on the image sensor so I can get some of the finer details that I wouldn't be able to see with the non macro lens uh, with all of the fine details and the strong overhead light, I think I actually have to add a bit of fill light here with another flashlight just to uh, capture some of those details in the center with the metal. So, yeah, it does work quite nicely. Here's some fine details, some um, sensors one of the pinch off points for the I guess the uh, neon gas fill hopefully there's still neon gas in there one day I would really like to uh, apply high voltage and see if I can get the laser to strike um, and uh, one of the electrodes for the laser in the back there which is out of focus until I get out to about there okay so that is narrow mode now let's try wide Alright, so now you can see the normal style pin cushioning. And as you would expect, because you're using the full sensor, the focal length is much shorter, or the apparent focal length is much shorter, and you have to be quite a distance away to get everything in focus. But it seems like when you use the shorter focal length, more of this is in focus. Right now I'm almost in focus at the back, almost in focus at the front, and almost everything in between is reasonably in focus. So I think that there is a trade-off in between the depth of field and the focal length based on the image sensor crop. Uh, it was a lot harder to see using the test card, um, just because the checkerboard is uniformly in focus from front to back, at least based on your eye. But let's switch back to let's switch back to narrow. Here we go. In narrow mode, tighter crop. We are out of focus past about here, and we're in focus all the way at the front. Um, if I shift this a little further back, we finally pick up focus at the back of the ring laser, but we're obviously missing the front end of this so 
I suppose as you go narrower on the image sensor crop, your depth of field shrinks um, relative to the image sensor. Let's test that hypothesis. Let's go to linear mode. See if that changes the picture at all. Um, all right, so in linear mode, it's pin cushion distorted at the edges, and from a depth of field standpoint, I think it's still out of focus behind this notch backwards, and everything's in focus up at the front. I'd argue that the front edge is actually a little more in focus in um, in linear mode. So in linear mode, the focal the depth of field shrinks, but it also shifts a little closer to the sensor. I'm not sure how the optics and the crop factor are changing how that works, but I suppose in narrow mode you've cropped down, in linear mode you're doing some distortions, so you're choosing pixels from one position and warping them to another, and those pixels would either be distorted or not distorted based on where they are in the image sensor, and then moved into a position where they are, I guess the data would be in focus, but moved to a different position. So I guess the depth of field is closer and you can see things in detail that are um, closer to the lens. I've rambled on long enough, but I think this is a, just a good test of things that this lens can do, things that this lens cannot do. Um, again, it falls apart when you're more than I want to say 10 centimeters from the object. Once you get more than 10 centimeters from the object, the focus falls apart. You really have to be within, I want to say, 5 to 7 centimeters for things to be in focus. But this is still a pretty good picture for a lens mod that I think cost about 30 bucks on AliExpress, maybe a little bit less, and fits in this tiny little case, snaps on, and enables you to get these fine detailed pictures um, on the go. Let's try this uh, random switch mode power supply I can get fairly up close and then it starts to distort so it's in focus at about seven to five centimeters and then it falls apart as you get closer. But if you tilt it at just the right angle everything's in focus. So you have flexibility with this lens to do whatever it is that you want to do if you want close-up shots. Again, this falls apart anything over 10 centimeters. Before I forget, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. If you've used the macro lens mod for the GoPro Hero 9 or other versions of the GoPro, please leave a message down in the comments. And uh, make sure to hit the notification bell to see you know, each week's video. I try and post once a week, and we'll see how long I can keep that up. Otherwise, peace out.